All right. Welcome to Carol Reinley's Imagination Podcast. Today, Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. We've got Jaden Fox. And Jaden is an international presenter and facilitator of Tools for Awakening Consciousness. He uses wit, which is why I love him, and humor and authentic expression to awaken and inspire other way showers to untangle limitation and connect to their inner clarity. So cool. And so they can step into what they came here to be and do yeah. now. And I now. love a part of that now. Yeah. He reconnects body, people to their bodies, their potency, and their playful magic while taking audiences beyond this matrix illusion and into their true magnitude beyond this universe. Welcome, Jaden. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good to be here. Straight from Thailand. So we yeah. have a little bit of time thing to do for this. Yeah. So I know. Um, So I appreciate your time. We are just going to openly play today. So uh, what Jaden's specialty is, is kind of like alternate realities, looking at forces that help us, looking at forces that don't. I was in a couple classes, actually probably more than a couple classes (laughs) with (laughs) Jaden, because he kind of goes beyond where anybody else who I had studied with before. And I've probably been doing this consciousness whole thing for about 20 years or so or maybe more than that maybe 50 or so years (laughs) yeah 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 you're such a newbie (laughs) yes and the thing that that you confirmed for me was like life is not showing up the way that I've always been told so why don't we just start there (laughs) I know you have a you have your story about how life didn't really show up the way we've been told and also I kind of looked around and said these people really aren't hearing me. They're really not choosing happiness. Yeah. They're really not seeing all this other stuff that's out there. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I know in your Beyond the Matrix class, you uh, you kind of really dive deep into that, deeper than I think anybody who I've ever worked with has done. So, so do uh, you want to describe your process for? getting there well it's uh, i wish it was a short little snippy thing i haven't come up with an elevator pitch for it yet but it's, <laughs> yeah but you, it's, don't, you don't have a one minute it's no i don't I hate I, that I, stuff it just yeah. seems like oh um it's like how do you take the infinite of of everything and condense it down to one minute yeah i don't know but the, the the thing about this reality that kind of grabs me the most is is a phrase from a tool everything is the opposite of what it appears to be yeah and that one really untangles a lot of stuff um because when you if you're willing to look I, that was one for me long long time ago in my early days of awakening i tripped over some phrase similar to that And it just blew my mind. It was like, whoa, really? And I took it quite literally. And so I looked for, like, well, where is it opposite? And the more you look, the more you start to see how much things are inverted from, like, what they say, what most people say is real and true, it's actually, in many cases, opposite of that 180 degrees almost exactly opposite of that some of it for me is uh, i explore this topic of it's like truth what percent limitation are you committed to Mm. more than 50 percent less than 50 percent and it's like i see a lot of people like most the the default here it's almost like They come from wherever they come from and they come here to play in limitation. Mm -hmm. And it's like everything is hardwired to look at life as if moving towards limitation is the right thing to do. And it's the, the, the light path. It like you see it in the whole new age movement, which is just a rebranding of the Hinduism whole thing it's like that all of that stuff is actually taking you deeper into limitation yeah but it's like if you're and and they call that the light (laughs) 
Yes. You know, yes. You're going towards light and becoming one with all that is and, and all this beautiful, juicy stuff. But it's actually marching you further towards limitation while pretending that that's not really what's happening. You're, you're yes. tangling yourself. You're binding yourself deeper yes. down. And one of the questions for me is like when, when I'll interact with people, uh, it's like, well, what percent are they committed to limitation? And even people who are new age and they're, they're, yes, I'm, I'm getting free from all this stuff. I don't know what they think they're getting free from, but they're actually tangling often quite a bit deeper yes. into something different. They might be getting free from the, the, the normal stuff that the rest of the world is tangled in, but they're digging deeper into something that's even more tangly than that. And yeah. those people, when you look at like, what is your commitment? It's almost like they're committed to reaching the bottom. Uh, the the AA uh, or A will say uh, that like, it's not until you hit the bottom that you're going to change it, like until you've drunk yourself drunk too often or smoked yourself out of it too often, you're, you're, you're not going to change because you haven't firmly hit the bottom yet. And Yay. <laughs> I'm, I'm and it's funny you say like the, the AA because in the, ma- I used to do masterminds and they use the same statement. I'm powerless to improve myself. And so it's kind of like, it's all these little things that have us looking outside of ourselves and then, <laughs> you know, um, and down a rabbit hole of whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And we've got the power within. Yeah. And it's not, in, but it, the world is so tangly and it's so backwards and it's so convoluted. If you think about it as people come here to explore limitation. Yes. And while when you're in that, you think you're here to get out of limitation, but the truth is what you're doing is you're exploring more subtle versions of limitation or different kinds of, or a broader spectrum of limitation, or like there's different ways of exploring it. But if you think about it as the normal path that most people travel is going deeper into limitation it's not until you reach a certain point where you see the truth of things and you get that you're just done with it. And it's like our people have gotten to that place repeatedly, (laughs) usually. And they're like, I'm just fucking done with this. And it becomes a thing of how do I get out? How do I get out? And yeah. for me, the way to get out is to realize that most of the world is traveling this way. It's like all the salmon spawning upstream, thinking that's the easy way to go. And you're kind of wanting to go downstream, but everybody's going, no, it's easier to go upstream. You're like, well, yeah. <laughs> why? it doesn't seem true to me, but maybe they're right. They can't all be wrong, can they? Yes. <laughs> yes they can. And my, my one of my rules is if I'm standing in a line anywhere, then I've been a little unconscious today. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, it's yes. like I always go to the grocery store at the you know crack of AM where nobody's gonna be in there. And it's like I just use my guidance to kind of say what's the best time to go because I do not want to interact with most people because as my dream that I had about a month ago where I was screaming, certainly you didn't send me to the planet with the stupidest people. (laughs) And I woke up just laughing and I was like, well, I'm in there too, because I chose to come, but we're, we're sovereign beings. We have choice here. This is not like what I look at is it's not a planet that's like any other. We have free choice here. Yeah. So the question would be, for what reason would we choose what we have out there right now? <laughs> and I, I'm not even going to go there because that could be a whole other. Well, and to uh, me, that the answer to that is if you think about this place as a place that people come 
to explore limitation. It's like if you're an infinite being living in an infinite world and you have no limitations, you have, you have no, con- no confinements, you, you can do anything, you can create anything, you can be anything, well, that can get boring. Or what do you do when that gets boring? Well, you come here and you play in limitation. You explore limitation. You explore all these subtle and manipulative and uh, deceitful or, or uh, illusory or, or just almost hidden, not almost, there are hidden ways of controlling and altering and manipulating you. And you, you're playing almost everything in reverse. Like you're you're moving, you're, you're seeking to understand and explore limitation and all of the dynamics of that. And it's not until you've gotten far enough in that you see it clearly. You're like, yeah, okay, I'm done with this. Now, how do I get out? And that's when it's turning around and going the other way. Yeah. So it's useful for me is to realize that the other people aren't going in a wrong direction. They're just not going in my direction. I've been there already and been there, done that, got the t-shirt. I'm done. And it's like, how do you then navigate the opposite direction? And how do you take an entire reality that's been hardwired to tangle you into limitation? And how do you navigate through and see all the tangles that have been inserted so you can bypass all that. And for me, I don't know how it comes through for you, but I find that it's almost like I'm starting in a future and I'm kind of coming back to look at like, I'm going to adjust this so that this has a different outcome over here. (laughs) Yeah. Um, There was a movie that I saw, I think sometime last year um, where they did that. They kind of like, They were seeing the future and then they would go back and change just the smallest thing so that we're doing it it the other way than this reality actually does it. The reality is actually just (laughs) trying to like um, just have you buy the story that you're limited and you can't go any further. And, you know, everything's, you know, no matter, okay, I'm going to try this. And I've always been one of those people like, okay, how about this over here? And well, okay, how about this over here? Well, this didn't work. Okay. Like, how about this? And which one was the one that was more easeful? And also, like, how much fun can I have with it? Even if it's, you know, if if the whole world is fuckery, (laughs) um, like, where could I actually just have fun with it and laugh Mm -hmm. at it? And and Mm -hmm. I find that when I'm in that, uh, I wasn't there two days ago, but (laughs) (laughs) I do have my days, but most days... Oh, you know what? Let's just, let's see what happens when, you know, and just have a little fun with it and see what happens. It's like life can actually be fun. Yeah. Um, and I just remember somebody saying that, uh, and I have this question for you too. So we're going to kind of go sideways a little bit. Yeah. Like we've been hearing a lot energetically about ascending and going into different energies and a little and I can definitely feel the difference in energy that the whole planet is at right now Mm -hmm. I think some of the stories that were attached you know didn't necessarily read totally with me but I do see like as a whole the vibrations are raising now the question is what does that do out in the world does that make people more asleep does it make people more awake are they going to start to see more will there be more people who are and i know we kind of reached a tipping point with consciousness years ago are more and more people going to be going to following their energy rather than the words of what's going on and i think that's kind of what we're seeing with i don't know that i've watched mainstream media for like probably a year or so Every once in a while, I'll watch one thing or whatever, but yeah, I just think I be like, I'll turn it on as like BS, like the talking heads. They're just like, oh, the sun is out today. And, you know, we had these, yeah. I'm in Atlanta. So we had the shootings here. What was that? Like a few days ago, or maybe over the weekend or whatever, where they said it was racially motivated and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, BS, BS. Yeah. It's all like contrived. It's all 
to get the um, <laughs> when I did when I did a lot of uh, classes and consulting and whatever they would call it the muba like the 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 cows and the <laughs> ah okay <laughs> and so yeah. they put their head up and it's like oh you got to turn this way so they all like go this way and it's like I'm not seeing that with people though as much anymore people are seeming to wake up now mm-hmm. when I go to the grocery store it doesn't seem that way always <laughs> I go to a restaurant it doesn't seem that way always but um what uh what percentage do you think that we're at as far as like people becoming more aware and what could that create if that is actually happening yeah and i know that's Um, a big question but (laughs) yeah so for me the 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 concept of the frequency raising that one can lead into a trap yes um that i firmly walked into because <laughs> you can yeah. raise your frequency to the point that you're you've exited the biological range that your body functions in and instead of functioning in instead of being in your body you're synthetic you're you're outside of your body and you can't even function in your body anymore because yeah. you've raised your frequency out of the biological range yeah there's a little um, bit of fuckery with that too Because I Mm -hmm. experienced that there was a lady that I was following and a bunch of my uh, clients were saying, oh, you really got to check this lady out. Well, she would do all these frequencies and I would feel like crap like afterwards. And I was like, maybe I'm just not, you know, pure enough. Or maybe I'm just not. What's wrong with me that I can't get this wrong? Hold on a second here. Like. If this is like, if anything, and I remember like so many people, so many different people were saying, if you're ever making yourself wrong about anything, then, you know, look at that. Cause there's never any reason to do that. I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So I got sucked in it. Cause you, it's like you, Oh, your life is going to show up as, you know, um, fairy dust and rainbows and, you know, unicorn farts and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and you're like, Mm -hmm. yes, (laughs) let's Mm -hmm. go. (laughs) And then Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I woke up the next morning and it's like my body's all, and I was like, wait a minute here. So, um, it's buying, yeah, I'm sorry, go. I was going to say it's buying, if you follow the, if I follow, had followed the energy of that rather than going, oh, they're promising me, you know, riches Mm -hmm. and little, you know, Mm -hmm. and just go to that mind space rather than the energy space of it that was kind of like eh, i don't know you, you know your body's yep. going i don't know that you really need to listen to this right now because of this oh this next greatest frequency and then the next greatest frequency it's mm-hmm. like isn't energy always there so would we really have to reach outside of us for some latest greatest frequency or has that always been there for us to do and if we're people living multi-dimensionally then would we not already be there yeah so that's the part of it i do kind of see as bs but i do think that yeah. um and i kind of interrupted you you were going to say something about that i do think that us as a planet like our whole frequency has risen i do see that but what does that mean in the whole scheme of things yeah yeah um Hanging to out. me i i think I like the word awareness and it's less, um, you know, charged, I think, than, than frequency and stuff. It, it's uh, like, it's one thing that's interesting about the COVID is it's this thing where all the governments decided, okay, we got to lock this down and we got to take control. And what does it do? It locks people in their house. It gets them out of their pattern, their routine. And, they, they can't live. run unconscious routine anymore. Basically, you're you've you've created forced meditation, like forced introspection, yeah. forced a, a time where you have you can do nothing but start to become more aware, and that to me has made a huge difference. In I, I just look at the the dialogues that are online, not so much in the media. That's same same, but. Uh, you look YouTube or you look in places that have dialogue going on. Yeah. 
and the dialogue is at such a higher level and there's yeah. so many more uh, conversations that are talking about uh, the interference and the manipulation of this reality and the control systems in a way that like before they, you'd just get a couple, you know, crackpots who like us who would be talking about it. <laughs> and now it's kind of like in the mainstream conversation and people just kind yes. of nod their head and go, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's what's going on. And yeah. so the, the sheeple thing has, um, there's a reduction in it in places. Yes. And the, the thing about awareness is it comes in segments or areas. It's like you may focus on one particular area and you become more aware in that. And the other areas you may not until it bleeds over or until something trips you into focusing on those areas. Yeah. But yeah. when I look at uh, sociopolitically or just the general state of the planet, the level of awareness is definitely raised in a tangible way. Yes. And that to me is the core element. It's like you get people more aware and you just can't fuck with them the same way anymore. They, they, they see through the bullshit and when enough people see through the bullshit, it just doesn't work. Yeah. And that, that to me is the thing that changes stuff is. Yeah. Yeah, Having and I think that more. is where we are. And I look at like people being pulled off social media platforms, and I think you really can't censor telepathy. Like that's where we are. <laughs> people yeah. know. Like people know. Yeah. Like, there's an energy to stuff that you're like, yeah, that's a little off, you know. Or somebody might mm -hmm. say something where normally we're coming out of the age of. I feel like the age of the expert. Yep. And this age has pissed me off since the beginning of it, because <laughs> I would never feel like I was an expert in anything. I always like, I'm curious about just about everything. Mm -hmm. And it can lead me down a rabbit hole here and a rabbit hole there, but it usually kind of brings me back. But it's like, you can't censor that. People have a knowing about things. Even mm -hmm. if you say, okay, we're going to shut you down and you can't say it over here. It's like, um, and I love watching J.P. Sears. I don't know if you follow him on yeah. uh, YouTube. He's I don't follow him, but I've seen his he, stuff. Yeah, He's hilarious. He's a riot. About all of it. He's like, oh, there's really nothing going on. And he's got like, he's in the streets of L.A. And there's all these like homeless people in tents. And oh, yeah, yep. there's nothing going on. Don't, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, don't so, look here. It's like, don't look <laughs> over here. Let's look over here. Yeah. And, and you see it being so contrived. It's like, okay, now this week, you know, people are going to start to become aware of this. So we better send out an interview with the royal family or, you know, all this other stuff. And we could go down. That's a whole other, uh, probably could be a whole other show. But it's like, you can't censor people's knowing. Yeah. You can't yeah. control that. And so yeah. I think that's, um, and, and, and it's kind of like what you showed me uh, working with you is like, if there's somebody saying over here that I, only I have the magic potion to like change this one thing and, you know. Warning, uh, warning, yeah, warning. warning. <laughs> like, but no, let's show, if somebody's saying I'll show you how to, and, and do what works for you, it's like, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the authentic part of that. I, I was yeah. telling a friend of mine that, um, I had gone to DC uh, to visit my sister and we went into this place um, and the, uh, we went in to get a psychic reading after being out drinking, which isn't always the best thing to do, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we went in there and this lady's like telling me that, uh, that I have a curse on me and that for $1,500, you know, if I would Ooh, go home and send her $1,500, that, that, like she that would expensive, huh? me. And I was like, <laughs> I'm in the wrong business. I know. I, I was like, that. I know how to clear <laughs> curses. They're really easy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's like, you're aware. I can start charging people to how to, for clearing curses. Yeah, $1,500 apparently is <laughs> going right. I think she did wow. get to jail. But anyway, um, <laughs> I guess she was scamming people. But it's kind of oh. like, it's that. It's like, 
And and there was a part of that that it was like, oh, that would be so easy. I could, you know, send this check. That was back when we wrote checks. And I, and I was like, I could write a check and I could send it to her. And she had all these like specific instructions, put a feather with a this, with a that, and yeah. with a check. And I was like, and I was like, wait a minute. Like, no. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like the, what I see our society being is, is this, full of these ladies like this, you know, Oh, yeah. send me $1,500. You too can be a whatever. And so just send me this today. Mm-hmm. People are seeing past that. The thing yep. with it is our yep. society has become so automated. That's what the shutdown did. It's like, it kind of got us out of that cycle a bit, even though it was supposed to put us more into it. Mm-hmm. When my phone melted down a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was kind of like, you know what? It's quiet. I like the quiet. Like <laughs> I can be selective about who I and my my list of people. I'm just uh, I'm still on a loner phone. Didn't carry over, and I was like, oh, yep. and I can be very selective. This could be a good reason for me just to go. Who do I really talk to? Yeah, who's really a contribution? And it doesn't matter if it's just one person or five or whatever. Do I really need these thousand people on my phone? No. You know so. It's kind of looking at that. I still feel, I still see people walk by um, because when everybody decided that they were going to be out walking, they'd still be looking at their phone the whole time. Mm-hmm. I call them yeah. phonies. Like, oh, there's another phony. I can't get <laughs> off the phone. Like, I can't not be attached to something. Yep. But I, I, but I also see like there's more people not buying into any part of the story Mm -hmm. um and um, and back to the age of the expert we're coming out of that but it always made me mad because i thought who am i like who would i be to to say that i'm an expert about something that's just ego like i've never been in that space about what i do or what i choose or you know the work that i've done and all that stuff it's like i've just never been in that space Mm -hmm. so um what i see it as is coming from more of a heart-centered space not the new age oh i'm gonna connect my heart into you know uh brother jesus over here and you know the (laughs) whatever names Mm -hmm. they want to put on it it's like it's not that at all it's knowing that this is kind of your gps Mm -hmm. um knowing that um, that you can't censor this either. Yeah. Like you just can't. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know that that was a question, but <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so where do you see, uh, where would you, and this is kind of a big question too. I'm asking all the big questions today. Where do you see us as a world mm-hmm. or set of galaxies actually i know you kind of work more <laughs> a little bigger that. space yeah it's yeah the whole space um where do you see us being within the next by the say by in the next six months end of this year um i don't have my crystal ball isn't tuned that way <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I just, so I, if you send I me, $1,500, I could, <laughs> I could tune my crystal ball just like that. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I'll put the feather and the kerchief and the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, be yeah. sure to send it to you. Yeah, I don't, uh, the, the one thing that possibility of I do see different now that didn't seem as clear before is prior to COVID, there was this sense of imminent collapse. Yes. That no matter where I looked, there was a sense of imminent collapse. Um, Just hiding slightly under the surface of everything, financial systems and everything. And what's fascinating is here's something that has kicked everything off the deep end in in almost every way that you can possibly kick it off the deep end and there's a a resilience that 
shows up that I don't know that I've seen before, or maybe I just bought into the notion that our system is so uh, frail and uh, manipulated that like there's no, there's no possible way that it's like a house of no cards, yeah, just no waiting for one thing. And I think what it showed me is that it's not as much of a house of cards as I thought it was. Um, it's not to say that there aren't parts of that, but mm -hmm. what I'm seeing is actually a rebuilding and reorganizing going on in a new way that I don't know I would have been able to see before. Um, there, there is... Um, a new way of looking at things that people have that's more open-minded instead of, well, my government says this, so this must be true. It's like there's more of this global mentality realizing that, well, all the governments fuck with everybody. Like everybody's lying in some way, shape or form. And there is a certain degree of, I don't like the word integrity, but, um, system in there that is malleable and does have the capacity to adapt and adjust and move things forward in potentially a better direction. Yes. Um, and I really, every, when I keep going back to it, I think it's the awareness component that does that. Like you get enough people in an organization that become aware of the bigger picture of things and that awareness radiates out. And when I'm hanging out with somebody who's unconscious and it's not judgment, it's just kind of yeah, it's just as a way of looking at it. it yeah. It's like my hanging out with them has an effect on them becoming more aware. Yeah. Even if I'm not trying in any way, shape, or form to create that. And as more people become aware, there is that chain reaction that I don't think it can be avoided. Yeah, I think I've seen that as well. Um, and people will tell me that. Mm -hmm. um, just like, oh, I had this awareness just sitting with you the other day. Or, you know, whatever. It's like... Yeah. Um, I think that it's almost like the words that are coming in and are beacons of possibility. It's like, you've got this story over here, this narrative of uh, your life sucks until you die. And then, you know, and then it ends. It's like, well, mm -hmm. is that really true? Mm -hmm. um, and what is possible for me to really be, and I think that like I'm getting heaven on earth, but heaven on earth has kind of been bastardized as well to like the new agey, uh, you know, that part of it or the real, like we are in a, like I remember looking around one day when I was stressed all the time and I was looking at like my environment and, and looking at the trees and the beautiful sun. And, and I was like, oh, we really are where they say we're supposed to be going but we can make it a hell or a heaven depending on what our frame of reference is. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not that it's a, I mean, it is and it isn't, it's been defined as time or whatever dimensions. And somebody was saying that we're like two, we're just at two dimensions above. If we're in the 3d reality, we're in two dimensions above hell. And I was like, Hmm. Or we're in hell, depending on how you want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of like most people, what are most people choosing? Do you think your life is yeah. just, I got to go out there and work hard and, you know, do all this stuff and then I die? And See, then that to me is the magic of the reality is you can have a reality where two people can be living in the same house together and one person can feel like they're having a beautiful life of discovery and exploration and, 
and things just Brain flowing medicine. for yeah. good in them. Yeah. And and it doesn't and I'm not I'm not talking about necessarily the synthetic thing. I'm gonna talk about actually having a good life. Yeah. Uh, you know, valid. And you can have another person who's in a very similar life, who's actually in suffering and struggle and self-torture and self-abuse. And it's, there's the, 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 the magic of the reality is such that it can contain and support all of those things. Yes. And it is so diverse that, and there's so much, um, I'm going to say diverse where you could, you could literally live hell here now in the worst case, in the worst possible way you can imagine and beyond. Mm -hmm. And you could also live just a completely magical life. And the reality is so dynamic that it can support all of that. Yes. The question becomes, what is it that you're personally choosing and how do you tune yourself to, or how do you, how do you choose what you prefer, even in the face of the opposite? Yes. Yes. And I and, think my natural space, and I think most people's natural space is I love life. Like it's joyful. I love having fun. I like messing with people. I like laughter, all that other stuff. Um, I think that there was an aspect of awareness for me to move past um, what I had been told my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like I would choose this, but then life was showing up as this over here and people were telling me this over here. So I must buy this as right and true. And when I bought it as right and true and claimed it, mm -hmm. that's when things went all to hell. Yep. And, and that's where if you look at it is at yeah. that this is an infinite reality and you can experience all of those things. It's like, what direction are you headed in? What direction are those around you headed in? And how can you be aware enough to sort out the pieces that take you in the direction you want versus the pieces that are trying to take you in the opposite direction. Yes. And I, I kind of uh, see it almost like as a computer game. Whereas when I'm going to go choose something that's good for me over here, like, or whatever words you want to use, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. use good, bad, whatever. Um, I don't go to polarity about it, but it just feels better Yeah, <laughs> to go this yeah. route. It's like, I always say, okay, they sent in player number one to make me doubt that I should do that. Then they send in, if that didn't work, they send in player number two. Okay. How about look over here, Carol? Like we, and, and it sounds crazy, but that's the way that I look at life now. And when players number one or number 101 come in, I just laugh now. Cause I'm like, Oh, yeah. isn't that interesting? Now I know I'm about yeah. to choose something that actually yeah. is, is, and that shows me that, Hey, choose it because yep. Um, they're sending in the players to kind of interrupt you, which is what mainstream media and all that other blah, 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 that chatter that we didn't have last year. It's like, yeah. oh, I could go this way. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if you see it that way, but that's kind of. Oh, yeah. 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 No, it's, it's the, it, I, I, I often joke. It's like, if, if you're trying to find your, your purpose, your thing, and you're trying to find a, a life that's enjoyable and fulfilling and nurturing and expansive for you. And you decide that uh, working at McDonald's is going to be what's going to give you that you'll find zero interference like yeah. interference to be like, woohoo, you go girl, you got it. You're yeah. right there. Yeah. You go. But if, if you're trying to do something that stretches you and takes you to a bigger place and empowers you and is closer to what you came here to do and to be more of 
the infinite being and the natural expression and the magnitude and the magic of you, yeah. then you're going to find there's a lot of things that are like, no, no, you need to be working at McDonald's over there. Yeah, it's okay. Over here, over here. A- anything, yeah. anything but where you're at. Yeah, it, over here. It's, over it's, here. You can tell it, it's, it's harder when you're, uh, there's a, what is the phrase? Um, it's like the, the 80, 20, it's like the last 20% is the hardest part of the entire journey because that's where the stuff starts to get real or starts yeah. to get in your face and starts to block you and obstruct you. And you start to doubt yourself and you start to question whether you're going in the right place on some level you can see those forces or energies is trying to stop you. Yeah. On, on another level, you can see those energies as their energies that are actually, if, if you're committed to you, they're helping you to find you hone in on you by learning to reject the, not you yeah. by learning to, detach from and the the in a, in a world of polarity to get the opposite of you shown to you and pushed at you helps you to see the 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 truth of you yeah and it's almost like it's a it's a a thing that forces you to stand up more and stand more in your potency and more in your power so that you can just be more clear than you've ever been and more strong and more uh, knowing and more aware. So on a, on some level, you can say that these energies or forces are actually there to assist you. Doesn't look that way. However, when you're, yeah, <laughs> but now I, yeah, it's like I, I'm more cheery when it shows up now because, yeah. Uh, and I was watching one of your videos that I think you recently sent out about polarity and stories. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. If you, uh, and we'll give the information to check it out here when cool. we, um, but I was just like, yes, because a lot of times if I choose something, I'm going to choose a thousand percent. So I did that last year. I'm going to drop all polarities. I'm going to, and it was, probably one of the most uncomfortable things that I've ever done. But the other side of that, now I can kind of go, Oh, okay. Everything really is, is co-creating with me. Mm-hmm. And if, if I'm creating my reality and I've given up all my stories of, you know, I have to do this because blah, I mean, that's been most of my life, probably mostly everybody's life. I have to do this because blah, there's always a story behind just about everything. And last week I saw that video and I was like, oh, that's a great reminder. I'm going to, I'm going to spend the week, like just not having any stories whatsoever. Nice. That nice. lasted about, you know, then I got on the phone with somebody <laughs> and they were like, hi, how are you doing? And I go, I'm good. <laughs> you know? And it's like, well, is this going on? Is that going on? I'm like, yeah, I don't really know. Like, how, how do you have these conversations? You can't be in a long conversation if you have no stories. So how do we interact with each other when there is no story? <laughs> well, it's what I do with that is like it. The question is more. They're in a programmed conversation. Yeah. How can you alter the conversation? So it's not the program looking though. at the program and arguing over which aspect of the program is right or wrong or good or bad, yeah. but it's like, how can you uh, almost invite that person to a new way of looking at things just by not dancing there? Yeah. That we don't have to live a life of solving problems. Like that was the big thing that came out of it. It's like, Oh, you know, as, as a coach and facilitator, like I always look that I'm helping people with whatever they might be calling me that they want their life to be a, you know, at the next level, or they might be calling me in the, ah, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's not that life is not a problem that we need to solve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was beautiful. It's just, what do you, what are you going to choose differently? Yeah, absolutely. What do you want? What are you going to choose differently? How do you get from where you are now to where you're seeking to be? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this is Jaden Fox, amazing uh, facilitator of Mac. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can catch him. Uh, uh, tell people where they can catch you. Uh, Jaden Dash Fox dot com. J A D E N Dash F O X dot com uh, is my website. Um, also, if you search on uh, YouTube, I've got. Got a tons of videos on, on YouTube. There and they're all good. Yeah. Yes. There's there's yes. A, a lot of if if you go to my website first, um, there's a good landing place for people. If you're in the false, uh, if you've explored with the whole new age movement and you've gotten tangled in it and you're looking for the way out, it's like that's what we're about is the way out. Like how do you if you've been trying to do swim upstream thinking that's the right way to do it <laughs> and you found that's not necessarily your truth anymore. Um, how do you untangle from that? That's I've got a lot of free resources on the website. There's a, a program called uh, the false light and that's a, all about new age stuff. Um, there's a program that's my kind of work in progress. Uh, it's the, we're looking at just what you were talking about the polarity mm -hmm. and the polarized points of view and the viewpoints and how do you get out of the programming of this reality? Um, and it's just a lot of, it's like, how can I empower people to go, to get from where they are now to connecting more to their awareness and their truth and their brilliance and their magic. And there's so much stuff in this reality to, that tangle that it's just like, jump in. There's <laughs> a lot of cool stuff to untangle. So yeah. let's play. Yeah, check out Jaden. He's amazing. He kind of everything that I've ever learned, he kind of took to a whole other level of awareness. And so I can't thank you enough for thank you. Yeah, I can't help it. It just does that. <laughs> 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 I tried to not do that. It just doesn't I know work. you just got to you got to yeah. be your sexy. That's you all just got to do my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So anyway, got to ask those weird questions and look at things in a really bizarre way. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I felt like, Hey, I'm home. There's somebody else out there. Like that's similar to me that we're going, what? I love it. What is yep. that? So anyway, thanks so much. Yep.